Welcome to Mathematics with Ams, and today we continue our discussion on calculus, sketching of graphs, and now we're going to look at cubic functions. Don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe. The graph of a cubic function. The cubic function has the general equation, the f of s equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. The graph of a cubic function can take on one of the following shapes, depending on whether the value of a is positive or negative. So take note, this is different from the parabola. Remember the parabola is quadratic, where this one is cubic. So if a is positive, that means the value find of x cubed is positive, then that is how the graph is going to be a from left down up. And if A is negative, it will behave up, down, down. Please take note, there are two turning points. But don't worry, more of this later on. The graph of a cubic function has two stationary points called turning points, local maximum and local minimum, as well as what is called a point of inflection. Let's explore this further. Let's look at the, the top graph. If you look at the behavior of this graph, then you'll notice that x, that the, the derivative is greater than zero when the graph is increasing. You remember from our previous discussions, then you get your local turning point, which is the maximum turning point where derivative is zero. Then the graph will have a decreasing function where derivative is less than zero. Then you get your second local turning point, which is called the local minimum. In this case, you get again an increasing function. So that is how this graph will behave if A is positive. If you look at the second graph, when A is negative, then it will start with a decreasing function first, where the derivative is less than zero. Then at the local minimum, you get zero for derivative, then it will increase again until it reaches the local maximum, where again derivative is zero, then it will be again a decreasing function. So remember now, the top one is when the a in front of x cubed is positive, and the second one if the a in front of x cubed is negative. Point of inflection. A point of inflection on the graph of a cubic function is the point at which the concavity of the function changes. Cubic functions can change from being concave down, or we call it sad or convex, to concave up or happy, or from concave up to concave down. An important principle is that at a point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to zero, depicted as f with a double accent mark, that is second derivative. The reason for this will be investigated later on in this chapter. So let's look at the graph there. You get concave down, the sad face, and then in between the, the maximum, the local maximum and the local minimum, you get your point of inflection. The same with the second graph. If it's concave up, and concave down, then again between the local minimum and the local maximum will you find the point of inflection. There are some cubic functions which can have a stationary point that is also a point of inflection. Yes, that is possible, that can happen, that both stationary and point inflection is the same point. So the first one, if a is greater than zero, then you get concave down in increasing function. Then your stationary point is also the point of inflection where B is, where the arrow is. And then you get an increasing function or concave up. So concave down to the left, concave up to the right. When A is less than zero, you get a decreasing function, which is concave up. Then your stationary point and point of inflection, then you get concave down or decreasing. This sketch or these two sketches are very important. Make sure you understand them. 
So we are now in a position to draw the graph of a cubic function. These functions have stationary points as well as points of inflection. Now again, let's look at the rules for sketching the graph. Number first bullet for the x intercepts, let x be zero and solve for y. For the x intercepts, let y be zero and solve for x. So don't forget that. So the first one for a y intercept, let x be zero. For the x intercept, let y be zero. Then the stationary points determine the first derivative to equate it to zero and solve for x. Substitute the x value of the stationary points into the original equation to obtain the, the corresponding y values. If the function has two stationary points, establish whether they are maximum or minimum turning points by referring to the shape. If I is greater than zero or if i is less than zero points of inflection if the cubic function has only one stationary point this word point will be a point of inflection that is also a stationary point refer to the to the shape to see what kind of po point of inflection is if i is greater than zero or less than zero for points of inflection that are not stationary points Find the second derivative equated to zero and solve for x. Let's look at our first example. Sketch the graph of the function the f of x equals to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. Already you will notice this is not quadratic, people, and also the c value is missing. So just take note of that. But the a in front of x cubed is positive. So already you should have an idea how this graph is going to behave. So, first of all, start by finding, let x be 0 to give you the y value, and let y be 0 to give you the x value. So now you've got your y 0, and your two x intercepts is 0 and 3. Then you do your stationary points. Remember now, first derivative, let the derivative be 0, factorize and get your two x values then substitute the three and the one into the original function to give you the two corresponding y values now your one turning point is three and zero and the other turning point is one and four now we refer to the rules of the shape to determine what graph what the graph will look like since if a is equal to 1, which is greater than 0 in the original equation, then we expect the two, that there must be two stationary points. It is clear that the graph has the following shape. So don't be the one turning point is 1 and 4, and the other one is 3 and 0. So therefore, because a is positive, it should behave like in the sketch. Maximum, down, minimum, and maximum. This means that 1 and 4 is the local maximum, and 3 and 0 is the local minimum. Now, the point of inflection, remember, you must find second derivative, 6x minus 12, let it be 0, get x equals to 2, and of course, replace that 2 into the original function to get your 2. So therefore, the point of inflection is 2 and 2. Notice that the s-coordinates of the point of inflection can be determined by adding up the x-coordinates of the turning points and divide it by 2. This is another method you can apply. And of course, now we can sketch. So plot, start by plotting the x points first, the 0 and the 3. Then you can plot the local maximum, 1 and 4, and the local minimum, 3 and 0. And then, of course, the y-intercept will also be the origin so complete your drawing and your graph is done right thanks for watching this video uh, welcome to maths with uh, mathematics with amps please again don't forget to give me a huge like and don't and subscribe